will be able to flow into areas where he can create from there. But will he have good enough movement ahead of him? That will be the important thing. So Denmark all in red preparing to get us underway at Al Janoub. To recap once again, as long as Tunisia don't beat France tonight in Group D's other match, the equation here at Al Janoub is simple. If Australia avoid defeat, then they're through. Denmark, quite simply, have to win. If Tunisia do beat France, well, that's when they get the calculators out. In that scenario, Australia would need to win to progress. If Denmark and Tunisia win, it will go down to goal difference, goals scored, and maybe even disciplinary. Let's hope not, for our sakes as much as anything else. But we're underway. Denmark all in red. Australia in the gold shirts, the green shorts, and the white socks. Denmark playing from right to left. And it's all about creativity for the Danes. It's all about, yes, they don't want to play for a draw, but keeping it tight early on for Australia. And key to that will be Harry Souter, the Stoke defender, who was absolutely outstanding against Tunisia as Denmark played into the penalty area looking for Christian Eriksen. It's cleared away by Australia. Ball goes out for an Australia throw. And Pat, already we were together for the Denmark against Tunisia game. Christian Eriksen getting into the penalty area so early on. It's exactly, as you said, pushing further forward. Key change for the day. Exactly, and they want to find the gaps there. I mean, one of the great things, apart from the fact that he's superb on the ball, you know, his set pieces are great, his set balls, but he is one of the great number 10s around the world just now. So he will be trying to find a lot of space there. I think Adam Moyle will try and get close to him, close him down as uh, often as he possibly can. I mean, uh, as, he, as we speak, they're right beside each other. But that's it, Ericsson's gig. And if he can get space, 25 yards out, he's as dangerous as any player in this match, obviously. Ball, ball over the top for Denmark is chested down by Matt Ryan, and we can take you through the teams. For Australia, Ryan in goal. The back four of Degenek, Suter, Rolls, and Behic. Ahead of them, it's Lecky, Irvine, Moy, who was, along with Suter, fantastic in the win over Tunisia. The former Huddersfield and Brighton man currently with Celtic. And Goodwin makes up that midfield with Duke, who scored the winner against Tunisia. And McGree, the Middlesbrough man up front as Australia have a throw over on the far side. So Denmark with Schmeichel in goal. The back four of Christensen, Anderson, Leeds and Palace respectively. Andreas Christensen, Rasmus Christensen's the right back, and Joachim Mailer. Ahead of them it's Hoybier of Tottenham and Jensen of Brentford with Scovolson, Eriksen of Manchester United and Lindstrom supporting Brathwaite up front as Australia have a throw over on this right hand side now and it's fair to say Pat they are taking their time early on just settling into this game two and a half minutes play but now Australia come forward with Riley McGree drives from distances blocked by Joachim Anderson and cleared away by Rasmus Christensen before Craig Goodwin cutting in from the left hand side good latch on to it Australia throw midway through the Danish half yep um, be careful Australia don't score too early like they did against the French <laughs> so there is that danger sometimes you can annoy and antagonise the opposition. But they do look dangerous when they break. Um, and I love the attitude of the Australian team. They won't play 100 miles an hour all the time, but they will challenge and chase and fight for every ball. And I think they will have the energy to survive this game. Here comes Denmark down the right-hand side, though. Possibly a little tug back there. And yes, there was. The referee has called the play back for a free kick to Denmark and a very, very early yellow card Very harsh. Australia. Do you know, now I'm watching that and from here I'm saying, well, I know what the fall is doing. He's slowing down. He's getting the ball and then he's putting the brakes on. He's gone in front and then thought, I will slow down and take the hit here. And he's waited and waited and waited and waited. And he's got a free kick, fair enough. But a yellow card referee, honestly? Yeah, it sets the tone and not necessarily in a good way. Behic into the book for Australia for pulling back Skovolson. And Denmark preparing to take this set piece. Skovolson and Eriksen are with it. It will be Eriksen to swing it into the area. Cleared away well by Rawls, the tall centre half. Australia have got two of them, both well over six foot. And Denmark pick up possession on the halfway line. Christian Eriksen will send it all the way back to Kasper Schmeichel. Four minutes gone on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Nil-nil between Denmark and Australia and big cheers from the Australia fans inside the stadium because Schmeichel has booted that straight out of play. Yeah, and you look at the effort you're going to get from the likes of Duke and McGree as well. McGree's playing behind them. But Duke, he will chase and chase and chase. And what Australia have got is they have got legs, you know, that can come on as well and help him and give him a little bit more if he runs himself into the ground. But just shows you that that was basically chasing nothing but he nearly got it 
forward by Matthias Jensen for Denmark. Brathwaite will send it out to the right-hand side. Opportunity perhaps down this right for Christensen. Does pull the ball in. It came to Jensen. And the ball goes out of play for an Australia goal kick. Well, that was a decent half chance for Matthias Jensen of Brentford there. But already the movement from Denmark is just so much better than we've seen for much of this tournament. Although we have to say they did have a very good second half against France. Yeah, uh, and the effort was brilliant there. And sometimes you just need to let off the leash by your manager. And, you know, they play with the back three most of the time. And then the importance of the wing backs becomes, you know, the most important thing in the game to them. And the wing backs in the first game that I watched didn't do particularly well. However, looking at it here, no, they, they look as if they're lively. They're enjoying the system. Lovely footwork by Jensen just outside the centre circle for Denmark, but then lets it all down with a terrible ball right behind Jesper Lindstrom. And we can head for an update from France against Tunisia. The other Group D match taking place, Conor McNamara. Yes, we started just a couple of minutes ahead of you. Still nil-nil here. Tunisia have started like a house on fire. They're trying to put early pressure on France. Remember, Tunisia must win to have any chance of going through. And Kamavinga has started at the left-hand side of a back four. Uh, they're trialling to see how he covers for the injured Tio Hernandez. At the moment, France and Australia, the two teams going through from this group. And Tunisia would be bottom as it's stands nil nil here thanks very much corner as Denmark comes down the left hand side with Mailer difficult one to deal with but Ryan just got there ahead of the arriving Brathwaite's you know Lindstrom playing on the left hand side here and to be fair he looks a little bit more comfortable I've seen him playing right and doesn't always look that comfortable but the second time that the Danes have got down the line and put a near post cross in and got very close to getting in there at that near post may well have been something they're working on because I mentioned before they usually like it high and long hey looks like they're changing it tonight collision for Australia between two Australian players Moyen Irvine has given Denmark a little space down the right hand side the ball forward from Scott Olsen had too much on it for Jensen but he's really picking up those positions isn't he the Brentford man stepping up from midfield drifting into the penalty area and looking dangerous it's more pleasing in the eye to watch the, the Danes play in this sort of way they are trying to get to the byline not just with dribbling but with good movements and one twos and that is just something they just they hadn't done I mean and maybe you say that about the Danes they can adapt, so they won't change it, not just the system, but the absolute style of the play. And uh, yeah, I think they'll be happy with, happier with their start than the Aussies, because uh, the Aussies are scarcely get out of their half. Nil-nil, seven minutes played, France already through, as it stands. Australia will join them, but a long, long way to go. Australia have picked the ball up as it's squeezed out to the left-hand side. Poor ball, Goodwin just didn't look, there was nobody out there. We're seeing some nerves at Al Janoub, Pat Nevin. Yeah, and it's no surprise. It's one of those ones where you almost forget about it when you don't play. If you make a mistake and your country goes out, that's your career almost defined by it. It's also the same if you go and score a goal against them through. But that's why sometimes in situations like these, when everything rests on this match, you do get some tentative stuff. So Kasper Schmeichel in possession for Denmark, but there's been a goal between France and Tunisia. Conor McNamara. Well, the ball is in the back of the net. Tunisia free kick on the far side taken in by Kasri. As the delivery comes in, it's put into the back of the net by Gandry. However, the flag has been raised and the video assistant referee is going to be having a look at this to see if it stands. On initial view, it looks like there may be another Tunisian player offside. I'm not sure that the goal scorer Gandry was, so waiting for the confirmation, but Tunisia hoping here there's a chance they might have taken the lead 1-0 maybe drama 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 in group D already so if that goal stands a draw would not be enough for Australia they would miss out if Tunisia win tonight on goal difference Denmark need to win regardless Australia coming down the left hand side 0-0 here at Al Janoub it's a poor delivery from the left right behind the goal just not the quality there from Behic for Australia and it's behind for a Denmark goal kick. Right, if that goal stands, I'm going to reach for my calculator right now <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think it is. Is Connor there? Let's head back to Connor. Thankfully for the abacus, and, and un unfortunately for Tunisia, the goal has not been allowed to stand. Maria, the other defender, was in an offside position as the ball came in. And, you know, the, this, this it could get very messy with the permutations. This even could come down to yellow cards, but only if Tunisia win. They need a good start. They nearly got it, but still nil-nil here. 
Thanks, Connor. Nil nil at Al Janoub as well. Nine and a half minutes gone between Australia and Denmark. As Christian Eriksen has it, 25 yards out central position. Plays it out to the right hand side, and Denmark will work the play all the way back to Jerky Anderson. Here is Andreas Christensen out to the right hand side. Once more, the Danes go all in red. So Australia in the good shirts, the green shorts, and the white socks as they work it down the right hand side. Pull back, huge chance for Lindstrom. Superb block at the back for Australia. That's outstanding defending, and it's preserved the clean sheet so far. Australia play it out to the left-hand side, but it's Degenek, the right back, making that block from Lindstrom as Australia play the ball into the penalty area, looking for Mitchell Duke, and Denmark will clear away. Well, Degenek is only playing because Nathaniel Atkinson's been struggling with injury. He wasn't chosen at right back against Tunisia. That went to Karacic, but he's coming today. That was a goal-saving block, Pat Nevin. It was, uh, and well done him. However, if I was in Australia, I'd be much more worried about the fact that left-back they've been shredded. They've got to the byline, uh, the Danes, four times. Now, they weren't doing that at all previously, but now the way they're playing, that's what they're trying. And once again, through, same place. Here is Matthias Jensen at Brentford, will go for goal, and it's tipped over by Mark Ryan. The angle was tight, Jensen got real power behind it. The Brentford man has started this match brilliantly for Denmark, who have a corner, nil-nil. They're overloading BH all the time. And he's turning around, he's seen his mates, look, come on. Give us a hand here. I can't stop two players. I can't stop the ball between me and the centre backs and the wide player at the same time. It looks as if he's having a nightmare game. And in actual fact, he could do with some help. So, good win. Get back. Help him from that left midfield stroke left wing area. Good start this by the Danes, who need to win if they are to have a chance. It would be a good chance of going through to the last 16. So, corner will be waiting to be taken. The referee, Mustafa Gorbal, is just inside the penalty area. I, I think I've said this in every commentary, that they, they are really focusing on... It's, it's not even really... It's not a coming together. It's conversations going oh, be, on between be, players. Be serious, Becky. It just wants on the telly. <laughs> Come on, let's be fair. Corner to Denmark to be taken from the right-hand side. Nil-nil on Five Live and BBC Sounds. It's swung in. It's headed away on the edge of the six-yard box by Lecky, back there defending for Australia. And the ball goes out of play for a Denmark throw. Well, Graham Arnold saying that there is no way Australia would play for a draw. But that doesn't mean, Pat, that they're going to come out gung-ho. Yes, they, they're looking to win this game because a win would guarantee their progression to the last 16. But they also tactically are keeping it tight against Denmark and looking to hit them on the counter. Yeah, but, but they're a pretty obvious 4-4-2, four, four, you know, and that's one of the most open systems you can play. And it is leaving two players generally up front. The problem with that is you play against teams that are, are very good at playing between the lines and the Danes have got Christensen so they can play between the lines. And at the moment, I, I don't think the Australians actually can cope with this for a great deal longer because the ease in which the, the Danish players are getting to that byline, particularly on the right-hand side. Here they go down the right once more. Scott Olsen plays it through to Brathwaite. Good sliding challenge at the back by Harry Souter, who's come out there to help out the left-back Behic. Yeah, well, well done him for doing that. Um, I don't think he want to do that too often because he's the right side the centre-back. So he's come all the way over from the other end. And, uh, you know, it, to be honest, this is what Denmark have decided to do at the start of the game. And it's when the, you know, the coaching staff of Art Australia can say, right, here's the problem. What do we do to help our, you know, particularly our full-back in the left-hand side there? Here goes Joachim Mela down the left-hand side this time. Denmark go in field to Brathwaite, into the area, lays it off to Skov Olsen, who drives the shot and he was tumbling Skov Olsen, and he scooped it over the bar. It's, it's almost making me smile, because every time the ball goes down there, Behich turns to the rest of his team, it's a left-back for Australia and goes, help, can you, can you do something? His arms are outstretched and he's like, you're just leaving me one on one and sometimes two against one all the time. Um, his mates are ignoring him. They just go and play in their own positions just now. And fair enough, that might well be the Australian way. And if they can get themselves into the game, that might mean they get a little bit of overlap themselves. Problem is, they've not got forward yet, have they? Nope, they are camped outside their own penalty area at the moment. Australia 0-0 with Denmark on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Here is Degenet, pull ball forward, intercepted easily by Huybier for Denmark. And now Mailer out to the left-hand side and Lindstrom played it into Degenet. So Australia will clear, but just the touches, the passes, that one there from Riley McGree. 
There are real nerves in this Australia side. They're looking to reach the knockout stages for only the second time at the World Cup. The first six since 2006 with that golden generation of Harry Kuhl and Tim Cahill and Mark Viduka. They know the weight of history that's on their shoulders. And we have to say, Pat, as Denmark play the ball back into their own half, you can see that weight at the moment. Yeah, it's been hard because that was, you know, the golden generation, the total golden generation. I don't think there's never been anything close to a generation like that for the Australians. And they know that, you know, even getting this far has been fantastic for them. But in the end, sometimes it's not the best players. It's sometimes the best group, the best team, the best organised, you know, the best feeling and spirit there is within the group. And there's no doubt there is that just now. But somehow they've got to get a foothold in this game. You know, I've not lost a goal yet so far in this game, but they've given up chances far, far too easily. And even though the Danes are not famed for scoring a lot of goals, to be fair, you know, even they on that, they've just taken each other out, the two Danish defenders. Yep, two Danish players going for the same ball, Anderson and Huibier it was, they've recovered. But again, we talk about nerves for Australia, there are nerves from Denmark as well. Denmark who were on their longest winless run at a World Cup, or in World Cup history, we should say. Five games without a victory, stretching back to the 2018 edition. They have only failed to reach the knockout stages once in their previous five World Cups. Denmark, they were seen as a side that could go deep into the tournament. They have to win here, otherwise their journey will end in the group stages. They're on top, but it's nil-nil here on Five Live and BBC Sounds as they work the ball out to the right-hand side. High ball into the penalty area. Australia able to watch it all the way across the box and will be cleared away up towards halfway. Denmark putting on the pressure to Riley McGree, who then has a bit of a swing at Jürgen Mailer, trying to keep hold of the ball and the whistle's gone. And it's a Denmark free kick midway through the Australia half on the left-hand side. France nil, Tunisia nil in the other Group D match. France, who are already through. Tunisia with a goal ruled out in that game so as things stand France already through we know that Australia will be joining them a long way to go yeah and you imagine this game will just get more and more tense as it goes on particularly if it stays at you know nil nil or one one maybe um, at, at the moment the, the, you look at the Australians and you just don't want to take any chances Christian Eriksen with this free kick for Denmark drifted in header on at the far post is into the side netting and the flag is up anyway for an offside, but it was Christensen making the run after scoring that thumping header against France. A game in which Denmark did impress in the second half, despite losing by two goals to one. But just one point from their opening two matches leaves them in this position. They have to win or they're going out of the World Cup. Here is Christian Eriksen on the halfway line, whips the ball across to the left-hand side. It's touched off by Lindstrom to Mailer on the halfway line and all the way back now to Bouibier who's the player in that Danish midfield who's really sitting deep at the moment in that defensive midfield role. Christian Eriksson and Matthias Jensen, the players getting forward. Australia have stolen it and bring it out to the right hand side. Here is Matthew Leckie, 25 yards out, plays it out to the left hand side of the penalty area. He saw the space out there but it's intercepted by Denmark. Decent vision, good defending by Denmark as they bring it down the left with Lindstrom. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame there for the Melbourne player. Uh, he's got the ball in a good possession uh, and he sees the right ball to play. He doesn't even get close to finding him. You know, I mean, you're talking, he's, he's three yards out, he's passed there. So they're not getting that many opportunities and what they have to do is slightly calm down. And I do take your point, they do look a wee bit nervy in the ball. Huge amount of space now for Mailer on this left-hand side of the penalty area for Denmark. The red shirt's arriving. Mailer will pull the ball back. Good save by Ryan. Won't fall to a Danish boot. Cleared away by Riley McGree on the edge of the penalty area. Oh, that could have gone anywhere. It's a Denmark throw. It's nil-nil. Fingertips. They're absolutely holding on with the fingertips now, the Australians. It's the ease, the absolute ease in which the Danes are getting through. They're not doing anything complicated either. It's not as if it's a massive, sophisticated passes that are getting them to the byline and getting these crosses in. It's just kind of neat play. So, you know, if the Australians survive this while playing like this, they'll have done very well. 19 minutes gone, still goalless on Five Live and BBC Sounds as Denmark pick up the ball on the right hand side. Scrov Olsen will clear it out for a Denmark throw. We'll be heading for an update from France against Tunisia shortly, but Denmark really pressing here. 
as they play the ball into the penalty area. Bounces behind for an Australia goal kick. So, Conor McNamara, come in. Tunisia still doing very well. 17 minutes played. Tunisia nil, France nil. We've got to see the uh, the animated uh, graphic about the offside. And to be fair to the lines, but he got it right. Gandry, the guy who put the ball in the back of that, he was the player who was offside as well as his teammate. So it was the correct decision. France have not got going at all. They haven't been able to trouble the Tunisian goalkeeper. But at the moment, this won't be enough for Tunisia. Bottom of the group as things stands. And France and Australia going through in Group D for the moment, nil-nil. Thanks, Connor. Nil-nil still here between Australia and Denmark at Al Janoub. Here is Andreas Christensen, all the way back to Joachim Anderson, Crystal Palace, back to the former Chelsea man, Christensen, and now Mailer on the left-hand side. Infield to Hoybier. Eriksen now brings it over the halfway line. To the left is Lindstrom. Advancing towards the penalty area, but stops and checks and will play it back to Ericsson. Swings the ball cross field, right foot of brilliant delivery. As you'd expect, the foot in on Scov Olsen and the corner given. Behic and the Australia fans inside Al Janoub complain. But it's a Denmark set piece. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for Behic there because, uh, well, he's just done his back and I've a short corner. Yep, short corner for Denmark, ball into the area. Christensen nods it down, cleared away by Austria. Australia and the referee spotted an infringement and it's Denmark's turn to protest. I'm just saying I'm happy for BH there because he got the ball once off the score balls and you know and that was one and one again so it's got it's a tough job sometimes the full back you've got to do that and then he was absolutely gutted he didn't get the goal kick for it but then he turned his back and walked away and left, <laughs> left it took a short free kick with no one or a short corner kick with no one near them it's uh, at the moment it's you know, without he's really demonstrating anything extra special, the Danes have looking at the best side. Uh, and by the way, has anyone come up to you today at any point and asked you if you are a Danish journalist out of interest, Ricky? Because to the listener who can't see us just now, they're wearing all red down there, and exactly the same shade of all red <laughs> is the dress that you're wearing. Australia head the ball on. I'm going to answer that in a moment. Riley McGree into the area, shot straight at Casper Schmeichel, who beats it down. I, I had two clothing options for this match. One was this red dress, the other was a bright yellow top. And I thought, well, people generally tend to wear, wear red more than they do bright yellow. If I turn up bright yellow, definitely going to look like I'm supporting Australia. So I'll take the red and chance it. But of course, of course, we're strictly neutral here on the BBC. And these are two great stories. Australia looking to get through to the knockout stages for only the second time in a World Cup in their history. Denmark have only failed to reach the knockout stages once before as the decision goes Denmark's way outside their own penalty area. As it stands, with it goalless between France and Tunisia in Group D's other match, it is France already through and Australia that will be progressing to the round of 16. But Denmark have been dominant so far, but it's that question mark again. Can they score enough goals? We have to say, Pat, they're not over-reliant on Christian Eriksen in this match. Jensen's been impressive and Skov Olsen dangerous down the right-hand side of Skov Olsen it is. He's trying to latch onto this ball. Behitz gets there, wins the header. Let's hope he doesn't turn his back on the throw. Yeah, to, to be fair, I think Eriksen does that quite a lot. You know, he just drifts about, drifts about, waits until the gaps start to open. And then we start to open when the opposition gets tired. And then he just gets into the game and he takes over the game and starts creating. But you're right, so far, very little from Christian. So 23 minutes played, nil-nil, ball over the top, picked up on that right-hand side once again by Skov Olsen, lays it off to Rasmus Christensen of Leeds United. Skov Olsen back in field once more to Joachim Anderson, the centre-half, who stepped up midway through the Australia half. The Australia fans are roaring and saying that ball went out of play. Referee disagrees. And Denmark in possession in the centre circle. Out to the left-hand side goes Andreas Christensen to Christian Eriksen. Now forward looking for the run of Lindstrom. Lays it off to Mailer. Lindstrom now hugging that left-hand touch line. Nice little one-two. Mailer into the penalty area. Very well defended by Aaron Moy. Mailer dropped the shoulder, then went the other way. And Moy wasn't fooled. Stood up and Australia can clear, but they've cleared it straight to Andreas Christensen, who slides in, Christian Eriksen, they're hanging on here, Australia, nil-nil on five live, and BBC Sounds, and Skov Olsen, 25 yards out, plays it out to the right-hand side, one-two with Jensen, Skov Olsen, good sliding challenge, just put him off, and the shot got the little deflection as it rolls through to Matt Ryan of high rolls. The game, same area, you know, between the, right, the left-back and the centre, left-centre-back, nil out one-two of this team, actually a very good play this time, uh, but they just don't seem to have an answer, the Australians, and 
you just wonder, I mean, if you're looking down at that, I know they do like to play in this particular system, but I think it's asking too much at the moment. They're losing the midfield battle. It's easy for the Danes. I mean, I've, I'm going to have a look up at the percentage statistics of, uh, you know, who's got the most possession, but there must be about 70-odd percent Danes. Must be at least that. Dara Moy wins the header for Australia, just inside the Denmark half, and the referee has given the decision against Moy. It will be a Denmark free kick. We, we, we talk about the way that Denmark played against France in the second half. They were speaking about the momentum that they had coming into this tournament, and the great wins over France in the last year. But as the ball goes out of play from that far side from an Australia throw, you think back to how they played at the Euros, the freedom, we, we know what happened with Christian Eriksen. And to be honest, even sitting here still, it, it is bringing a smile to my face to see him out there on the pitch. But they played with the freedom. They took the handbrake off all those things that we heard, the emotions that, that they focused and it brought them together as a team and a country and they just played some absolute brilliant football. We've not seen that at this World Cup as Casper Schmeichel has the ball inside but, but, the penalty got, area. But you've got a Belgian way in a competition and they look as if they are building a way in a competition. I'm not going to look, you know, asked of them so far by the Australian team at the moment but uh, I mean you, we love the story, we love it, it's, what's happened with it. If you're playing against the Danes you don't care about that, you know. By the way, I apologise to the listeners, I thought it was 70%, I was completely wrong, it was 73% <laughs> possession of it. Uh, I wonder how my mate lied when he's doing, remember him from Tunisia? Indeed, let's check in, France, Tunisia, Conor McNamara. France have just had their best chance of the game, it remains Tunisia nil, France nil, but Kingsley Coburn into the penalty area after a nice passing movement, he was just stretching a bit wide to the left hand side as he caught the shot, and he sent it wide of the target, but it's the first piece of intent we've seen from the French of the game, Tunisia nil, France nil, Tunisia still on top. Thanks, Connor. So as things stand, it is France and Australia going through to the last 16. A win secures it for Australia, but a draw's good enough as long as Tunisia don't win. Denmark have to win to have a good chance of going through. So the ball is headed forward by Australia. Yeah, draw, defeat, no good at all for Denmark. The win takes them through, unless Tunisia beat France, and then we all get the calculators out. Exactly. When you're looking at the game just now, and you see that Denmark have had the better of it by some distance in every way imaginable chances created holding the ball looking dangerous you name it every tactics are working quite well but they're still behind in the group you know so you look down at that Australian bench and they're probably not be too downhearted about it because you know that's the game you know come and break us down come and score that goal it's hard to score goals they are getting the chances so they'll they will not be too downhearted at the moment the Aussies Brilliant control by Jesper Lindstrom from the ball on the crossfield pass from Jürgen Andersen, but he's been penalised by our referee Mustafa Gorbal. And Australia will have a free kick in a deep position. And Matt Ryan, who's already been warned for time wasting by the referee, which I loved that. Instead of just waving the referee for Matt Ryan to get on with it, the referee ran all the way from the halfway line, had a conversation with Matt Ryan. He was now walking as slowly as he can over to the ball to take this free kick. And then the referee just walked all the way back. So he, he wasted a good, a good 30 seconds can, on top of what Matt Ryan was can, wasting already. Can we book the referee for time wasting? <laughs> Australia bring the ball down the right-hand side. Two Danish players in attendance to Mitchell Duke, who picks it up once more, plays the ball in. It's cleared away by Hoybier back there defending for Denmark and will be flicked down the left-hand side by Lindstrom. This is better from the Danes as Lindstrom picks it up once again. They're screaming for it in the centre. Lindstrom still going. He's past rolls. He pulls the ball across. It's cleared away by Australia inside their own six-yard box. Comes to Ericsson. Edge of the penalty area. Poor shot. Drags it wider the near post. Yeah, but once again, time and again, they just keep getting to the bylines. And that's the first thing that Australia have actually got a decent amount of men forward, isn't it? They got the ball in the, the, the opposing 18-yard line. They didn't really do a lot with it. They can't seem to put any more than three, four, at a maximum five passes together. But when they lost it there, there are too many players forward and the ease in which they were broken on. It just shows you that almost in a catch-22 position at the moment, except that none of it matters until they lose a goal. Interception forward from Riley McGree carries it all the way through to Kashmir Schmeichel, who has had very, very little to do. Nil-nil on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Australia.
going through with France, who are already qualified as things stand. But if Tunisia were to score, everything would change. Denmark play the ball over the top, looking for the run of Lindstrom, who's really growing into this game down the left-hand side. Spoke about how the attacks were coming down the Danes' right over the last five minutes or so. It's been Lindstrom down the left that's looked dangerous. With this man as well, as they link up, Mela lays it off to Christian Eriksen. Back to Mela once more. They're drifting centrally, now back out to the left-hand side. And Eriksen once more has Aaron Moy in close attendance and that as Pat usual. Nevin called earlier that's the key game plan put Moy huge Premier League experience one of Australia's big leaders big players on the danger of Christian Eriksen as Moy just gets a foot in ahead of Lindstrom flicks the ball off Lindstrom out of play for an Australia throw nil nil it's one of the things people do forget about you know Christian Eriksen you look at him and you know he's, he's not old but he's not the youngest player in the field and you think, well, wait a minute, he's not going to outrun you, he's not going to run the legs off you. Actually, he's incredibly fit. And it's going to be a tough gig for Moy to not only physically stay with him with a running pair, but also mentally, because he only needs a couple of yards. At the moment, Moy has given Christian Eriksen nothing. As for Schmeichel in possession for Denmark, just outside his own penalty area. A reminder, commentary of Poland against Argentina coming up for you on Five Live and BBC Sounds today with Alistair Bruce Ball and Chris Sutton. We'll have updates from Saudi Arabia against Mexico as well. And if you would like to watch this match with our Five Live commentary, you can search for World Cup Extra on BBC iPlayer and there's the option there to sync up our commentary with the pictures. Or you can join Jonathan Pierce and Dion Dublin over on the TV. The ball is forward, Mitchell Duke to the penalty area for Australia, ball out of play, goes out from Australia throw, a rare foray forward into Danish territory by the green and gold as they play it now, central position, Jackson Irvine, header was flicked on on the edge of the area by Duke, but only takes it straight into the arms of Kasper Schmeichel who launches it long, over halfway, looking for the run of Brathwaite, he's been very quiet so far, Martin Brathwaite, and as Australia intercept, that's the issue, isn't it, for Denmark? They started the first game against Tunisia with Kasper Dolberg. Then they switched to Andreas Cornelius against France. Now they switch to Martin Brathwaite. It's what we said at the start of the tournament. They just can't solve that striking problem. And considering how many times they've got to the byline and cross it across, an actual striker thinking, well, I could get a couple of goals here easily. Um, but they haven't managed to do that. And it's, people think, oh, it didn't fall to my feet. Somehow the natural strikers always happen to be in the right places and it's none of the Danish players have done that yet and I do say yet, you just never know. You can go on a golden streak at any time. 13 minutes plus added time to play in the first half, nil-nil. France already through, Australia as it stands will be joining them with France nil, Tunisia nil, the scoreline in the other Group D games. Denmark spread the ball out to the left-hand side, Mayla slight miscontrol, Degenek clears away, out of play. Kasper Hulmand stands on the edge of that dotted technical area, watching on Graham Arnold, the Australian manager out there as well, gesturing and pointing. How will he assess this game so far then, Pat? Because they're completely under the course, but Denmark are struggling to create clear chances. Yeah, but they're creating half chances. They're getting in very good positions. But in simple terms, it comes down to that one fact. It's only one fact. You know, if they keep it in now, now they can keep it in now, now. And he'll be happy and he'll be smiling and he won't take too many chances. I certainly won't ask his uh, wide attackers to go and play like wingers up the field until they actually do lose a goal. Another brilliant ball from Jürgen Anderson of Crystal Palace. Won't be kept in over on the far side on that occasion by Scott Olsen who lifts up a hand in frustration. But he's put in some really good deliveries, the Palace defender. And that was another one as Australia win the throw over on the far side. And as we say, in, in terms of the the draw at the moment the draw is good enough for Australia if Tunisia score and go ahead against France Australia are going out and, and that's that's the dilemma it's not clear cut for Australia yeah. unless Tunisia don't beat France and, and th they will know that of course they'll know the score at the moment they're playing like they know Aus Tunisia and France are drawing and they're coming forward now it won't be controlled through the middle by Matthew Leckie and tidied up at the back by Myla for Denmark, but Lecky almost, if he brought that under his spell, he was in on goal there. Do you know what? I thought it was Duke, first of all, and had it been Duke, it was taking that ball there. I don't think that uh, that defence there, and even if they were Andreas Christensen there, I don't think they've caught him because he's a natural striker, he's quick as well, so 
that's the last three or four minutes, that's three or four touches in the box that the Australians are getting, so we're getting a little bit more hopeful now. Here come Australia and Behit down the left-hand side, cleared away by Denmark, helped on by Moy, met by Jürgen Anderson. One on the halfway line by Harry Souter. Degenet will play it back to the Stoke defender. Goes long now, looking for the run of Lecky. No collision between Lecky and Andreas Christensen, and the whistle's gone again. This time it's in favour of Denmark. Let's head to France, Tunisia. Conor McNamara. Still Tunisia nil, France nil. Still Tunisia on top. And uh, Kazri's just had the latest attempt on target. He's cut it on the volley, edge of the penalty area, straight to the goalkeeper. But Mandanda could only parry it away. Earlier on, Slamani had a header, but no power on it. France have yet to have a shot on target in the match. We played uh, 35 minutes. Tunisia nil, France nil. Thanks, Conor. We just get the feeling. There will be more twists and turns in Group D. Tunisia need to win, but 0-0 against France for now. Something they can build on, and as we're hearing from Connor, very much sounding the better side as Australia play the ball out to the right-hand side, and Degenek flicks it on. Won't be brought down by Lecky, just bounced ahead of him, and it's sent back by Mailer all the way back to Kasper Schmeichel. Ten minutes to play in this first half plus out of time. It's Australia nil, Denmark nil. Yeah, yeah but a wee bit better from Australia. I, mean, I know there's a lot of Australians listening back home and listening. I'll be glued to you know, the headphones or the sets or whatever. Um, and you'll be thinking, oh my goodness, it's all gloom and news. And it was there for half an hour. Last five or six minutes, you're thinking, OK, a few passes been put together. I think as the frustration you were talking about earlier on, I think the Danes are thinking, we should be ahead now. How come we're not ahead just now? So, yeah, I'm definitely a bit more hope for the moment. Jürgen Mele driving in field is bumped over by Mitchell Duke. He's absolutely furious that he's conceded that free kick. But a free kick it is to Denmark, just inside the Australia half. Lovely story from Mitchell Duke, who scored the winner crucial precious winner against Tunisia in Australia's last match he celebrated by making the J sign with his fingers which he said he practiced because it was for his son Jackson he was in the crowd did it back to him and they interviewed little Jackson afterwards and he said daddy did a good header into the goal I mean they're <laughs> perfectly summed up <laughs> yeah, he will fund it at some point I know and a very good header it was from Mitchell Duke that gave him the win against Tunisia Let's put them in a good position to qualify. Nil-nil. Ericsson's ball to the edge of the area. Cleared away by Australia. Duke is back there. Gets the second touch up towards halfway. Headed forward once more by Denmark. Behic wins the header. Denmark get the foot in. Brathwaite won't latch onto it though. Ahead of Rolls. Who's applauded by Harry Souter as Craig Goodwin tries to counter. It's a case of nearly but not quite, isn't it, for Australia, when they're leaving the player up. Goodwin on that occasion, Lecky a couple of times over on this right-hand side. The ball is back with Denmark just outside their own penalty area. But a couple of times you think, oh, they've almost got in there. In increasing, increasing little bits of hope. Just It's incremental, it's tiny, you know, but they're beginning to tiptoe slightly into this game, beginning to believe in themselves as a team. I think they were just outplayed for the first half, you know, for half an hour or so. You know, they couldn't get close in the midfield, they couldn't get close. But a little bit better, I mean, Moy's not giving Christensen any, you know, any space at all. But he was hardly taking part in the game. And I'm just watching whether, you know, they decide to let Christensen go a little bit deeper. And he's just giving the ball away terribly there. Poor ball, yes, by Christian Eriksen. Australia slowed down by Matthias Jensen and Lecky will play it back inside the Australia half. Yeah, another player I'm kind of look, we've not really talked a lot about. I mean, I watched Jackson Irvine quite a lot and He's a really nice technical player, but he likes a game when there's a bit of space. He likes a game when he gets his head up and play passes. He's not really good that involved, but he's the kind of player that if, it, if players get tired around him, he'll look better and better. Ball cleared away by Mailer, but straight into the face of Riley McGree, who keeps going and brings the ball down to the byline. Swung into the area, poor delivery, headed away by Hoybier, who's picked up that positioning well. 
on these crosses from the right-hand side for Australia, and Christian Eriksen has it now. Outside his own penalty area, plays it forward. Brathwaite tries to lay it off to Lindstrom, put his feet in a tangle, but comes away with the ball and plays it out to the right-hand side now. And Rasmus Christensen, and all of a sudden, it's just opening up a little bit, which will suit Denmark. Here is Skov Olsen down the right-hand side, back to Christensen. Jensen had to leave it. Skov Olsen wasn't quite there. Jensen was offside. It's a miscommunication. It breaks down for Denmark. Australia goal kick nil nil. Well done, Goodwin. Goodwin finally has decided that it's time to get back and help my mate. I mean, if you play 4 4 2, the two wide players, yeah, you're a winger, but you're also the first line of defence and you're there to help your full back. And that's why they never get through that time. Time in the game, the first half an hour, they were getting through. Now, that's whether the coaching staff have got a message over there, but he's realised my mate's having a bad time get back there and cover in front of him. He did it there, and in the end, the Danes didn't get a cross in, and that's why it happened. So, well done for Australia, you know, figuring it out. I'll tell you what, they nearly left it too late, because the chances it created beforehand were too many. Ball out of play for an Australia throw. I think Matt Ryan is timing his goal kicks for your, your summariser comments, Pat, because he <laughs> talked all, he waited all the way through that and sent it out to this right-hand side. The referees let it go. Australia. As things stand, with France nil, Tunisia nil in the other Group D game, are going through. A draw is good enough. If Australia take, if Tunisia lead against France, a draw won't do for Australia. Fine margins in Group D. Denmark have to win. It's nil nil here on Five Live in BBC Sounds, and the ball is all the way back with Matt Ryan, the Australia goalkeeper. Lifts it out to the right hand side, goes over the head of Jesper Lindstrom, brought down by Riley McGree. They are getting into their stride here, Australia, as Moy plays it forward. Laid off by Goodwin to Mitchell Duke. Bear Hitch is there as an option. Duke might go for it. Does drive it in low. It's straight at Casper Schmeichel. What a shame. I mean, a brilliant piece of play there. You know, these last 10 minutes, it's as if they say, well, let's get through first 15, 20, 25. You soak up a bit of pressure. Hopefully, don't lose a goal. And then let's get into the game. And it's, it's last 10, 15 minutes, I'd say 50 50. Maybe even a bit more Australia of getting control of this game, which you couldn't see coming. Three and a half minutes, plus out of time to play in the first half. Nil-nil as Denmark pick up possession for Australia ball forward. And here goes Christian Eriksen. He's forced out to the left-hand side. The red shirts are gathering centrally. Eriksen needs help out here on the left as he runs past Graham Arnold, the Australian manager in field. He goes to Jesper Lindstrom. Nice little one-two. Mailer to Lindstrom. Straight at Matt Ryan. And it's that connection that is often coming off for Denmark, but the final ball, the final delivery, the final choice, that's really poor from Lindstrom. Um, brilliant play by him to get into that area. But really, your right foot <laughs> on the left-hand side and you're getting to the byline? It's the most, I mean, even if you're not very good with your left foot, you put it in there because it's in the right angle. He's tried to curl his whole body around it, just played it straight into the goalkeeper. So, a bit of a disappointment there. Christensen wins the header for Denmark. We'll be heading to France against Tunisia shortly for an update, but Denmark coming forward once again down the right-hand side. Skov Olsen plays it out for a throw. So, to Conor McNamara. Closing two minutes of normal time in the first half. Still Tunisia nil, France nil. Another chance for Tunisia. Kasri into the penalty area, right-hand side. Unselfishly tried to pull it back. It flashed through the six-yard box and squirted out the other side. And Tunisia will be frustrated because they've been the better team, but they haven't been able to threaten Mandanda properly. France, dreadful. Their passing is brutal. Griezmann and Bappe Giroud all looking on the bench, but the 11 on the field look poor for France. Tunisia nil, France nil. Thanks, Connor. as Christian Eriksen concedes a foul on Matthew Lecky and Australia have a free kick. So France already qualified, Australia, as things stand, going through nil-nil against Denmark at Algenoud. Yeah, you can hear a little bit of singing now from the Aussies. You weren't getting that much before because I think they were in a panic because all the, they, most of the Australian fans are down behind that goal to which they're defending. And I think they were seeing far too much of the ball. They didn't want to see any more of it, particularly in that right-hand side there. But now I think they've just got it. Wait a minute. We're in this. We've still got a right good chance. So well done getting behind the team. Here is Matthew Lecky for Australia. Chests it down. Mailer plays it out for an Australia throw. Into the final 90 seconds plus out of time in the first half. Nil-nil here on Five Live and BBC Sounds as Degenek comes to take this throw. 
from the near right hand side. Four golden shirts inside the penalty area as Degenek launches it in, headed away by Hoybier, who's been commanding aerially from those balls in from the right hand side throughout this match. Degenek gets it back though, right hand side, trying to play it through the legs of Mailer. He's wise to it, exchanges passes with Ericsson and now Brathwaite turning in the centre of the park, but he's closed up, it's not been his afternoon at all so far. Martin Brathwaite, the former Middlesbrough and Barcelona man. And again, I've got to say, Denmark looking pretty toothless up front, although the creativity has been better as the ball goes out of play for an Australia throw midway through the Danish half. Yeah, the creativity has been better in you know, good periods of the game. But at the moment, it's quite nice, but when they lose the ball, they, they, they revert to tight. You know, they get massive numbers back there. So when they win the ball and try and play up to breath weight, he's on his own. So, you know, they revert to tight being ultra cautious. Degen with the throw into the penalty area. Hoybier doesn't win it cleanly that time. Lecky scoops the ball across. Schmeichel is there, big punch up towards the edge of the penalty area. Not quite the distance. Lindstrom does chest it down though, and it's eventually cleared away by Mailer. Intercepted by Australia on the halfway line. Into two minutes of added time at the end of this first half. Nil-nil on Five Live and BBC Sounds. As it stands, Australia going through with France, who are already qualified. Nil-nil they are with Tunisia. Tunisia Tunisia, as Connor's been telling us, very much having the better of that game. But it's goalless there, as it is here, as Denmark have it on the right-hand side. Australia appealing for a handball, not given by the referee. Poor ball given away by Skov Olsen. And then the foul given away by Skov Olsen. And Denmark are getting very frustrated, and it's largely with themselves. Yeah, I can rate the sort of Look at the referee there. I think they might have pulled his card out there. That was a, a very, very petulant tackle there. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't get what they want, but there's no way that Scott Olsen's going to win the ball there. Just came through the back of the defender. I don't know if it was a Behic, I think it may have been there. So yeah, he's a wee bit frustrated, but he can't go straight through the back of a player like that. I think Scott Olsen's a wee bit lucky there. So free kick to Australia. Graham Arnold, their manager, stands with his hands clasped behind his back. Looking to reach the knockout stages for only the second time in their history at a World Cup Australia. For the first time since 2006. And as it stands, that's what they're doing. And they picked up possession with Mitchell Duke midway through the Danish half. Lays it off to the left-hand side. Ball into the area. Cleared away by Andreas Christensen. As Jackson Irvine was arriving. And the ball is out of play for an Australia throw. To some degree, if you're Danish, you want this half to end now. They're just too easy again that they They've just lifted it and it's, you know, it's, I, can't, I didn't see the switch, I didn't see the change, I didn't see maybe just the way players are getting a little bit further up the field a couple of times. The, the fullbacks are now and again overlapping as well, but just as a group, they just started believing themselves. Well, fortunately for Denmark, the half has ended. We have to say overall, it's a half that they have dominated. But again, it's that same issue as Christian Eriksen and the rest of the players trudge off. Toothless in attack. The striking issue that we talked about coming into this tournament, is it going to cost them their place in the knockout stages? For Australia, Pat, they weathered the storm for the first half an hour. They grew into the half and in the final few minutes, they looked pretty dangerous. Yeah, I mean, what a lift you've got if you're Australian because I, I think every Australian fan in here was thinking we could get battered here. They're, they're just creating so many options. They're just flowing through our defence like a knife through butter. This is a maritime. I'll be honest with you, I thought that myself. However, just a little click, about 30 minutes, they've thought, all right, let's take part in this game. They started breaking, nothing complicated at first. And now you see the belief growing. So uh, there are going to be two very different managers in there. And I think the Aussie one will be happier. And after all of that for Denmark, Kelly, we're just seeing the efforts on goal. They've only had one more than Australia. Five to Australia's four. And therein lies the tale. Same old story at the moment for Denmark. Unless they can find a goal, unless they can find a way to win. They're going out of the World Cup. Half time at Al Janoub. Australia nil, Denmark nil. Thank you, Vicky. And as Vicky says, Pat, this is the same old story for Denmark in that you know, they're creating a few chances, they can't quite convert them. And up until towards the end of that, that first half, it looked like Australia were going to be the, the same way. When you say that they've clicked in the latter stages, what do you mean? What What's starting to go right for them? Um, well, I think the midfielders kind of not really take part. 
And Aaron Moy wasn't taking any part in the game at all, other than trying to stop Christian Eriksen. And sometimes that happens. You tell a player, look, that's your job, stop Eriksen, or stop whoever. And it's just to kill it, and then it becomes a game of 10 against 10. Um, we wasn't seeing a lot of Jackson Irvine as well. He was just doing a running about job. They had a real problem with Goodwin wasn't giving any help to BH, and he wasn't doing any going forward. Then suddenly that midfield decided, actually, we'll start passing it to each other. We'll start holding the ball. They, I don't think before that 30th minute, they played more than four or five passes together. And you can't get by in the World Cup without holding the ball at some point in time. <laughs> then when a little bit of space opened up, and good players, and decent players, in fact, poor players, do well when they've got space. When it opened up and they come off the face a little bit of Danes, then the Australians say, OK, we can play now. And I think that's maybe more than anything else. I'm not saying they're exhausted after 30 minutes, but let's be honest, three games in a shorter period of time, it's hard to keep on going at that high tempo. And I think the Aussies are feeling good about it because they now are much more in the game and feels as if they're, you know, punching at their own weight now. And normally this is the point at which I'd say to you, what can Denmark do in the in the second half? The problem is, this is what Denmark have done. Yeah, and it may well be that I can't see them come back to you know, back three wing backs. It wasn't working very well for them. Um, you know, they have got other players they can bring in, but none of them have been like, you know, set the heather light, as you and I would possibly say. Um, it's hard to see what they do, except the manager gets, gets on top of them and says maybe, look, for 30 minutes there, you keep on creating chances or getting into dangerous areas. Do you know if you keep on doing that? One of them might come off, so don't lose heart. I think, Kelly, there's there's one player that hasn't featured here in all the attacking players that, that, that they've tried. That's Yusuf Yurari Polson. Hasn't featured here. He, he just made the squad. They they named most of the squad and then named five players at the end. But he played at Euro 2020, and you know it's 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 one of those things. He's the only thing they haven't tried really. <laughs> it is an option that is open to them. Vicky Sparks and Pat Nevin at the Al Janoub Stadium, where Australia are drawing nil nil against Denmark, and for a long time it felt like a match that really needed a spark. It did need a spark between Tunisia and France. Conor McNamara, Tunisia Tunisia nearly lit that touch paper. Yeah, remember, Tunisia must win to have any chance to go through, so they've been throwing everything out of there. They've been treating this game like the knockout game it is for them, but nil-nil at the break. The big talking point, offside goal scored by the defender, Gandry, uh, the, the video assistant, uh, or the VAR uh, review of it later on, and the graphic showing that Gandry was just offside. He's, he's upper body and shoulder leaning forward behind the defender as the, as the ball came in. But that was the big scare for France. France, who, if you missed the team news earlier on have made nine changes. They've rested all the big names to the bench. Camavinga's playing left back. Doesn't look comfortable there. He's a very talented player, but he's out of sorts in that position. You can see he is frustrated. They've not created chances, not a single shot on target from the French. They've got Colin Mouani leading the line up front. Kingsley Coleman's had their best chance, played into the penalty area. Poor first touch brought him wide, and then a poor shot was off target. So France have been poor. There's no doubt Tunisia have dominated, but, and this has been the problem for them throughout the tournament, they've yet to score a goal at this World Cup. They can't finish off their chances, and at the moment, Tunisia are going out. Tunisia nil, France nil at the break. Conor McNamara, thank you very much for that. There does seem to be a theme that has developed throughout these matches in Group D of not being able to finish off their chances. As things stand then, Tunisia, France are goalless, Australia and Denmark are goalless. Coming up later on this evening, the seven o'clock kickoffs: Saudi Arabia against Mexico, and Poland against Argentina. We'll look ahead to that one and get the thoughts of Mauricio Pochettino after the BBC News with Alison Hughes. Take the World Cup with you. Qatar 2022. On BBC Sounds, this is BBC Radio 5 Live. More than 10,000 ambulance workers at nine NHS trusts across England and Wales have voted in favour of strike action in a dispute over pay. The GMB union says the decision hasn't been taken lightly, but strike days before Christmas are being discussed. It comes on top of industrial action already announced by paramedics from the union Unison and members of the Royal College of Nursing. Prince William's godmother, Lady Susan Hussey, has apologised and resigned as a royal aide after she repeatedly asked a black British woman where she really came from. The conversation took place at a charity event on violence against women held yesterday by the Queen Consort. 
The government is asking to temporarily use police cells to hold inmates after what's been described as a sudden rise in the prison population. The Justice Minister, Damien Hines, says there's been an increase of more than 800 prisoners in the past two months. And the Transport Secretary Mark Harper is meeting five Metro mayors from the north of England to discuss record numbers of train cancellations. Figures show that one in 26 services over the past year have been cut. Now the travel with Ellie Brennan. In the latest travel news, there's a couple of problems on the M62 this afternoon. In Merseyside, two lanes are closed eastbound before Junction 7 for Rainhill Stoops. There's been an accident there and it's adding about 15 minutes to your journey. In Cheshire, also eastbound, a lane is closed because of a broken down vehicle from Junction 11 for Birchwood to the Eccles Interchange. Traffic's looking slow on the approach there. In Denbyshire, there's heavy traffic on the A55 North Wales Expressway westbound. There was a vehicle fire earlier between Junction 25 and 24A for St George. All lanes are back open now. And in Hertfordshire, there's two lanes closed on the A1M northbound between Junction 3 for St Albans and Junction 4 for Hartford. There's been an accident and traffic is already building up pretty quickly, so expect delays. Ellie Brennan, Five Live Travel. The best live sports. The FIFA World Cup, Qatar 2022. Coverage of every game on Five Live and BBC Sounds. The stage is left to Marcus Rashford with the free kick. Oh! On Sunday evening at 7, Senegal v England. We're going to go again and, you know, it's knockout football now, so this is where it becomes a lot tougher. Take the World Cup with you. Listen on BBC Sounds. BBC Five Live. The FIFA World Cup. Qatar 2022 with Kelly Cates. Hello, welcome back to Five Live here at the Qatar World Cup. At halftime in Group D, it's Australia nil, Denmark nil, France nil, Tunisia nil. As things stand, France already through to the last 16 and Australia would be joining them if the scores were to stay like this. Later tonight from six o'clock, Emma Saunders is going to build up to a crunch final Group C game, which sees Robert Lewandowski's Poland face Lionel Messi's Argentina. Both are looking to reach the last 16 of the World Cup. Ahead of the game, I caught up with, I say caught up with, bored to death, the former Argentina international and Premier League manager Mauricio Pochettino on how much uh, I loved being at the Argentina-Mexico game. But I also spoke to him about why Messi is so important to the team's success and how the pressure might have got to him in their opening match when they lost to Saudi Arabia. I know what it means to play for Argentina when you bore the, 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 the flat, the share. The pressure is maxi. It's so... Um completely different to when you play for another club or, of course, when another competition. I think a massive relief for Argentina. I think it was a complicated game, it was difficult because it's not easy to play well because with this type of pressure. But I think when Messi scored and when you have Messi on the, on the pitch, it's capable of everything. And I think the celebration was a big relief for everyone. You, you can see the coaches on the, the dugout, that how they were. Um, yes, you, f you feel the country that is in behind you, supporting you, but uh, it's the responsibility uh, to deliver a very good performance and, and, and win the games. When Messi was at Barcelona, Xavi said, everybody thinks that it's easy to play with Lionel Messi because he's brilliant. It's not, it's really difficult to play with Lionel Messi because he thinks differently. Yes, exactly, else. exactly. For the teammate, it's not, it's not easy because uh, Messi in his brain is always ahead of everyone. He's a genius, and um, and and for you, uh, you know, to follow him is impossible uh, you, because he always is is uh, is seeing what is going to happen. And for the normal player that I was, or normally average player, it's difficult to be in the mind of of Leo. That is is why Xavi, that was a great, great, great player, also speaking this in this way, you know because he knows very well Messi and that he knows that he's a, he's a genius like Maradona, like Pelé. And, and of course, uh, it's easy and it's not easy. That is the controversial thing that, that happened. No? And similarly for, for Scaloni as well, to set up a team around him, it's slightly different the way they're, they're, they're blessed with Messi, but it's slightly different how they're, they're working the players around him. What, what do you think? I, I think they understood very well that uh, you need to build a team around Messi. It's not point to go in in different direction. I think what uh, was good for Argentina until we arrived to the, the World Cup, winning 
the, the Copa America like in Brazil, they think that they find, find the, the real organization and the, um, they put every single thing around Leo for him to be and express all his talent. And I think he's a, a leadership that need the, the, of course, the team around playing for him, uh, for him to be decisive like happened again in Mexico. I think that is important that uh, uh, not only the coaching staff, you know, the teammate, they know they job and they need, they need to run for Leo. They need to give the ball to Leo in every single uh, situation that uh, Leo is, uh, is free to play. And that is, I think, the national team understood time ago that that is the only possibility if we want to be close to win the, the, the next World Cup is to uh, build this organization around the best, the best player in the world, that is Leo Messi. There are so many players at this World Cup who were in their final World Cup finals, Messi being one of them. At this stage of his career, is there a risk playing him every game? Do you think as, as a manager, Scaloni will be trying to, to manage his fitness? Does he have to do that? No, for me, I think it's important to, to understand and for the, for the public also that Leo Messi knows uh, himself very well. He knows uh, if he is taking some risk on the pitch or not. And then Leo Messi always uh, should be on the pitch. It's, it's, it's football. Leo Messi equal football. Football uh, belongs to Messi. And I think it's, that is important to understand. Um, now it's a very short competition that we need Leo on the pitch. And uh, for sure Leo will know when uh, he needs to go out and rest a little bit if he feels that. He, he, he's a, a player, a special player that you always in your mind, you can prepare changes, change the system, change, but Leo, with always Leo on the, on the pitch, of course. And he's still looking for a goal at the knockout stages of the, of the competition as well. If he manages to do that and Argentina keep learning in the way that you say they've already learned over the opening two games, what can Argentina achieve at, at, these, at this World Cup? No, I think everything is possible. I think um, I wish, um, because I, I am <laughs> Argentino, and uh, I wish that Argentina can win the, the World Cup because I think a player like Leo Messi lifting the, the trophy should be amazing. And yes, that is my wish. That is my wish and, and I think uh, that can happen. Always you need some luck in different games uh, to win on the end. We are going to compete, compete with very good teams like England, like France, Brazil, you know, our team that um, have this similar quality to Argentina uh, or Spain uh, or Germany to, to win. But I think Argentina have different mentality, you know, if we see that we are growing in a good direction, I think Argentina is capable to do everything. Mauricio Pochettino talking about, amongst other things, the possibility of Lionel Messi lifting the World Cup for Argentina. Their first step towards doing that is to get the right result against Poland. That one kicks off at 7 o'clock this evening at the 974 Stadium, at the same time as Saudi Arabia take on Mexico. As things stand in Group C, Poland are top with four points, Argentina and Saudi Arabia on three, and then Mexico with just one point. It's an open group and will be across everything from 6 o'clock with kickoff there at 7. Meanwhile, the second half is about to get underway. Tunisia against France in Group D and Australia against Denmark with Pat Nevin and Vicky Sparks. Thanks, Kelly. And a change of piece at half-time. It's the team number 26 as well. Keanu Bacchus for Australia and Alexander Barr for Denmark. So Barr is on for Christensen and Bacchus on for Craig Goodwin. So let's see how that changes things for Denmark. Straight swap, so they can still stick with the four bar. Scotting in at right back. He's very attacking, Alexander Barr. One of the players that was one of the final five to go with Denmark as Christensen sends the ball all the way back to Kasper Schmeichel. A little dink over the top. And that's not controlled by Andreas Christensen. And Kasper
Chris Michael has sent it straight out of play for an Australia corner. So the two changes made, Goodwin on for Bacchus and Christensen off for Alexander Barr. But it's Australia who have started brightly in this second half. Australia, who a reminder, as things stand, will be going through with France, who are currently nil-nil with Tunisia. France already qualified, Denmark need to win. If Tunisia score, it all goes up in the air again. So, corner for Australia from the right-hand side, swung in, flicked on, headed away by Denmark, comes out to Blihic, headed away by Matthias Jensen out for another corner for Australia. Well, Pat, we said at half-time the two team talks might be slightly different, it seems as so. Graham Arnold has gone rather well. Yeah, I mean, a positivity of the team right from the start here. But you can see that belief growing the last 15 minutes, and uh, it just started exactly the same way today, the, the second bit. We'll figure out when the game calms down why they've made the changes, but I think Goodwin probably came off because they needed a lot bit more cover in front of the fullback. But other than that, you know, positivity from the Aussies. So corner swung in from the right hand side once more by Aaron Moy, cleared away by Jochim Anderson, headed out for a throw to Australia deep in Danish territory. Nil nil. And Australia it is who are starting this second half brightly. The throw to be taken from the far side. Denmark with the red shirts, back inside their own penalty area, headed away by Pierre-Emile Huivier. Now Aaron Moy will try and latch onto it once more for Australia out to the right-hand side. He goes spotted with a back heel pass from Matthew Leckie, but it does in the end fall to Christian Eriksen of Denmark and up towards Brathwaite, who lays it off as Denmark breaks down the left-hand side, Lindstrom just touches it on that left touchline to keep it in. And back now to Christian Eriksen on halfway, but Australia through Mitchell Duke of one back, and here they come inside the Denmark half, driving with Jackson Irvine now. The central midfielder lays it off to Riley McGree, left-hand side, pulls it back in, and the first-time effort from Jackson Irvine is over the bar. Yeah, just mentioned before, that when you give Irvine space as a player, um, it's, and in there, he was the one who plays the one two. He should get that on target, to be fair. I mean, you don't get that many opportunities in the World Cup. He's got into the right position. It was a little bit of a cutback. It was slightly behind his left foot. But him, with his technical ability that he's got, I've watched many times, he should get that on target. Australia, though, keeping up this bright start. Behic has won the throw midway through the Danish half. Nil nil here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Behic, it is. Waiting to take this throw. Australia in the golden shirts, the green shorts and the white socks. Denmark all in red. Australia playing from right to left. Looking to reach the knockout stages at the World Cup for only the second time in their history. And the first time since the golden generation, Kjul, Viduka and Cahill in 2006. And they've won another throw right in front of their manager, Graham Arnold. As the hitch will take down the left-hand side, they go. Miscontrol by Jackson Irvine, and the ball bounces out of play for a Denmark throw. But Irvine has a real strength to his game of arriving into the penalty area, and we saw it in the final 10 minutes when he did it on one occasion at the end of the first half. Already, he's just pushing a little bit further up his knee, and we've already seen him with that effort, one-two inside the box, curling it over the bar of Schmeichel. It's just one of those builds over the years that I've watched him. You, you want to go up and shake him sometimes and just say, Come on, mate, you can do more than that. You've got such good technical ability. Go and impose yourself in games. And just these last 10 or 15 minutes, he's begun to do that a little bit more. Denmark pick up possession on the right-hand side. Nil-nil here on Five Live and BBC Sounds as Matthias Jensen spreads the play. Looking for the run of Mailer over on the left-hand side. Degenek will watch it and will ease it out of place. So we'll take you through the lineups. Australia with Matt Ryan in goal. The back four of Degenek, Suter, Rolls and Behic. Ahead of them, it's Bacchus who's come on, sitting alongside Moy. And then McGree's drifted out to the left-hand side. Jackson Irvine is playing in the attacking midfield position. Out to the right is Matthew Leckie and Mixel Duke up front. Can I say you've nailed that there. 4-2-3-1, exactly how they've lined up. And it was take me a wee while to figure out what they're doing and that is nailed on exactly how they're playing. I was going to say, could you tell I wait until four minutes in? Just to make sure. <laughs> to be fair, they've all been just camped outside yeah, the exactly. Danish half. So actually when Denmark are in position, it's in possession, it's easier to see the formation as Denmark win a throw on the far side. Denmark, incidentally, with Schmeichel in goal. The back four of Christensen, 
No, it's, in fact, it is Barr who's come on for Christensen. That is their change. Rasmus Christensen, Joachim Anderson, Andreas Christensen and Mela. And then ahead of them, it's Jensen and Hoybier with Skovolsen, Eriksson and Lindstrom supporting Brathwaite up front. So no change for Denmark in terms of an attacking sense with Martin Brathwaite so far. As Denmark in possession over on the left-hand side. Nil-nil, six minutes gone in this second half. Denmark have to win. Or well, the side that reached the semi-finals of the European Championships only last summer will be heading out of the World Cup. And as things stand, Australia will be going through with France. But all is out on the left-hand side. In field now to Mailer, edge of the penalty area, plays it forward. It's a poor ball, too much on it for Lindstrom, cleared away by Australia. Let's head for an update from Tunisia against France. Conor McNamara. 52 minutes of the clock, Tunisia nil, France nil. France still yet to have an attempt on target. Tunisia still banging on the door, but they're pushing it, forcing it a bit too much. Laiduni did well to win the ball off for Fallon, so the penalty area. He had two teammates inside of him. He went for the tight angle and he blazed it over the top that's the sort of decision making that has let Tunisia down so far Tunisia going out of the World Cup as things stand today Tunisia nil France nil thanks Connor mentioned for your favorite player there oh yes well done, Connor. Connor. <laughs> he's a great Jensen ball into the area Scott Olsen very well blocked away he fired that effort in from 14 yards on the angle and Australia do manage to clear it's back with Jensen now the Brentford man digs it into the penalty area cleared away once more by Australia Mitchell Duke will help it on and Australia will try and counter with Irvine turns into trouble turns into Christian Eriksen and the ball will spin out of play and Alexander Barr there nearly took out his own manager Kasper Ullmann pulls out of play for an Australia throw nil nil and we're just stopping play here because Rolls really bravely stood up to that Scott Olsen shot it's hit him in the chest to be fair rather than the face but still the power that Scott Olsen got behind that the referee oh, and Stafford the... Corbels just stop play to make sure that he's all right I would say please give him a break he needs a few moments because it, the, the play didn't stop he was clearly winded and uh, the cross came in and he was trying his best to get back up there he was going to recover definitely there but he needed a moment well done referee give him it so throw to Australia just inside their own half flicked on by Riley McGree the shoulder Mitchell won the ball but he's been penalized by the referee and Denmark have a free kick which will be left for Hoybier of Tottenham to take spreads the play to Andreas Christensen and now Joachim Anderson nil nil here on five live and BBC sounds 53 minutes gone and Al Janoub, Denmark need to win. Australia, as it stands, are heading through. If Tunisia score, though, everything changes. In that case, a draw would not be enough for Australia. It's not enough for Denmark, and they're coming forward now into the penalty area. Just overrun on the far side and cleared away by the big boot of Jackson Irvine. Yeah, he's having a good time at the moment. Uh, for a player who hardly kicked the ball in the first 30 minutes, he's been very, very important. In it. And, but he's playing in that kind of 10 position. It's a... It's a position that suits him best, and you can see he's much more lively in it, but you know, it's just whether... You think they maybe have weathered the storm, you know, because I think the, the 10 minutes that started this second half, the Australians started really well. But to be honest, there's this, there's this fine line between, you know, having intensity and panicking. But you want some of it, and we're not seeing quite enough of it yet for the Danes, are we? It's very pedestrian so far. Over the halfway line they go with Andreas Christensen and now lifted forward by Jürgen Mähler. Easily mopped up by the head of Harry Suter. And will be brought forward by Bacchus out to the right-hand side. Australia go once more and they can comfortably send it back to Matt Ryan. He's closed down by Brathwaite. Ryan's clearance under pressure out to the right-hand side. Mähler misses the header but just got a little nudge in the back there by Matthew Leckie. And the ball is out of play. But it will be... Denmark throw. A reminder that you can watch this match with our commentary if you go to the BBC iPlayer, search for World Cup Extra and you can sync up the pictures with our radio commentary and BBC TV coverage. Commentary of Poland against Argentina coming up at 7 o'clock with Alistair Brees Ball and Chris Suttleman we have updates from Saudi Arabia against Mexico as well. As Denmark have the ball just inside the Australia half 3 o'clock our coverage begins tomorrow. Commentary of Croatia against Belgium. Updates from Canada against Morocco. 7 o'clock. Japan v Spain. Updates from Costa Rica against Germany, of course. All the build-up 
starting in five live breakfast from 6am. Denmark in possession, Lindstrom plays it forward, Brathway can't bring it down. Cleared away by Degenek over the halfway line, lovely control by Matthew Leckie, but then he played the ball straight into Andreas Christensen, he's racing over, trying to prevent the Australia throw, can't do so. And the ball is out of play for that Australia throw just inside the Denmark half. Yeah. Nil, nil. Just a moment ago there, there was a massive break on for Leckie. And had the Australians had Christian Eriksen in their team, he was through. He would have found it and he'd have pinged the ball over the top there. And that's the difference. They haven't got anyone who will actually be able to see that sort of pass the Australians quite to the same you know, extent as Eriksen. Whereas, if you look at the Eriksen there, he's wanting someone to make an intelligent run in front of him. Nobody is. You're, you mentioned the breath, but he's not gone beyond the defenders at any point in this game. It's as if he doesn't feel he's got the pace to beat them behind them. Denmark are preparing a double change. I think it's pretty nailed on that Martin Brathwaite's coming off. Could be wrong, but as Pat says, he really has offered very little in this game. The striker conundrum continues for Denmark. Kasper Dolberg preparing to come on along with Brentford's Mikael Damsgaard. He's given it 10 minutes in the second half, Kasper Juhlmann, but it's been better for Australia. 11 minutes gone in the second period as Denmark work it out to the left-hand side. Just kept in by Lindstrom down to the corner flag and he's done really well there was he pulled back there. It will be a free kick to Denmark just down by the corner flag as well. Yellow card into the bargain for Australia. Quickly to Tunisia against France. Conor McNamara. Things in Group D have just got really, really interesting. Tunisia have taken the lead against France. And it's one of the great individual goals of this World Cup. The former Sunderland man, Wabi Kasri, has just weaved his way through the French defence. It looked at one stage like a heavy touch had taken it away from him. But he stretched every sinew. He got up there first and he edged it beyond the goalkeeper Mandana and France trail 1-0 here and Tunisia with your game still level as things stand will be going through and the Australia fans know inside Al Janoub silence around us and that's not because Denmark have got this free kick in a dangerous position they know Tunisia have taken the lead and suddenly a point is not enough for Australia it was never enough for Denmark they need to win over this set piece from the corner flag swung in and it's all the way across the face of goal well if they were trying to catch out Matt Ryan it didn't pay off and now Group D Pat has got very very interesting and we'll get the calculator right. out Th these teams need to really go for it it's as simple as that they absolutely need to go for it now and that's a shocker of a result I mean you, you kind of didn't expect it but kind of half expected it really because you know that they're you, you know that they've got everything to play for Tunisians and you know that the French have just basically got a bunch of players out there that might have been fighting for their position but also for the situation that well we're in here just now but we'll probably get dropped for the next game so maybe they're not at it anywhere near the level they should be the French so double change for Denmark Jensen of Brentford is off Damsgaard his club teammate is on and Brathwaite as we predicted unfortunately for him has been replaced by Kasper Dolberg so all will change in Group D here on Five Live and BBC Sound, Sounds. As it stands, Tunisia are going through on goal difference ahead of Australia. So as it stands, Denmark and Australia both now need to win. Denmark already knew that. They know they need to win. As the ball is brought down the right-hand side by Barr into the penalty area for Denmark. Australia will pick it up down by the byline and that's well defended as well. They're saying that the throw should be going their way, but Alexander Barr has won it for Denmark. Well, yeah, well, I'm looking, well. about, looking down here, I'm trying to see, has the information got on yet? Um, obviously the Danes have made a couple of substitutions there, but they were happening while that goal was scored. So has the information got on to affect the players, particularly, specifically, the Australian players though? Denmark into the penalty area, Hoybier tried the one-two with Dolberg and it's just about smuggled away by Australia out of the penalty area and now they're roared forward because they need to score and the ball is through with Lecky, he's one-on-one -on -one with the last defender, Joachim Mayler, Lecky into the corner and Australia on the counter have taken the lead against Denmark and with the scoreline as it is with Tunisia leading France it's a goal they need if they're to reach the last 16 for the second time in their history Australia won Denmark nil what an incredible couple of minutes we've had
the Tunisians score the goal and you think, well, I can't see they're going to get anything here. He has just scored one of the great goals, well, certainly in this World Cup. When Lecky gets the ball, you think, OK, there's too much to do here. He's on the halfway line, he's stayed on site, there's no doubt about that. But he's well marked and I think, well, there's no chance there. You've got two players behind you. And I'll tell you what, he's killed both of them, gone to the left. Schmeichel thinks he's got it covered, no chance. It's almost hit the side of the post as it's gone in there. I didn't see that coming. I absolutely didn't see that coming. Game on. In fact, group on. What celebrations from the Australians. You talked out about whether the message had got through. The substitutes knew. They were all on the pitch, mobbing Matthew Lickey and Graham Arnold. <laughs> what a, he's such a character, the Australian manager. He went off to join them and then he checked himself yeah. and he said, no, there's a long way to go. Well, but he knew and now he's tapping both forefingers to his head to his Australia players and he's saying, focus. Because at the moment, a win, regardless of what Tunisia do, and they're beating France in the other Group D match, will take Australia through to the last 16. And now Denmark have to score two goals. They've got to win. They have not scored multiple goals in a World Cup match, Denmark, since beating Cameroon 2-1 in 2010. This is a huge, huge test for the side that finished semi-finalist at the Euros last summer. And it's whether they can change their style. You know, they've been very calm and, you know, they're holding the ball quite well. They're playing a very simple way that's not complex. Do they believe they can score those two goals? They have to throw everything in it. The World Cup is sitting there. You're going home tomorrow unless you do something about it. You might as well have a dig. You might as well have a go. So Denmark in possession on the halfway line. Ball played out. It's too strong for Mela. It's straight out of play for an Australia throw. Conor McNamara, Tunisia, France. Yeah, Tunisia who've got the lead against France. They're doing what they can do here by the goal to nil. The goal scorer, Kazri's uh, gone off. He was injured in the process of scoring Jabali is on. But an interesting change for France, and this could spice it up. Mbappe is on, Rabio too, and Saliba. Uh, Saliba coming on means that Didier Deschamps has now played all the outfield players in his squad over the course of this World Cup. Tunisia won France nil, but at the moment, not enough for Tunisia. Here come Australia again, leading by a goal to nil. Irvine's ball into the area. So much space for Leckie on the far side of the penalty area, but he can't bring it down. And it's behind for a Denmark goal kick. That was, it was written in the stars there. The ball was played there. Again, it's a really good play. I have to say, time and again, Jackson Irvine's got great positions there. He's pinged the ball. He's only it's two yards too high, isn't it? Two yards too high. Had it not been, there was a diving header waiting. Oh, but Denmark could be in here. Lindstrom just won't reach that. And the ball bounces through to Matt Ryan in the Australia goal in his own penalty area. And I'll tell you what, if he was taking time over releasing the ball in the first half, get your stopwatch out, Oh, Pat. yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> It'll take as much as... I mean, for every goalkeeper will do the same. But, I mean, the situation they're in just now, the belief that they're playing with as well, they kind of want to nick another one. There was a free kick given against uh, Leckie there, far side. It's hard to see what it was, although the defenders actually stayed down there. But it's hard to see what was wrong with that. Maybe his knee caught him as he went on for the ball for the header. Yep, Jürgen Mailer limping away for Denmark. Denmark, as it stands, limping out of this World Cup. They need two goals. And then we will see. It will go down to goal difference or goal scored or even disciplinary between them and Tunisia. But they need to get the two goals first for that to come into play. Scott Olsen into the box wins the corner for Denmark. Just another. Look, they have to look at that. Bear Hitch had fallen on his backside again there when he was supposed to stay up. Didn't make a tackle and they almost got through again. They've not tried that for about 25 minutes down that right-hand side of things. I don't know why they stopped doing it because it was getting so much positivity down that sort of area, but we shall see if they learn. So here goes Christian Eriksen from the corner, floats it in for Denmark. Australia get the first contact. Damsgaard is out there racing against his number 14 counterpart, Riley McGree, who gets there first for Australia. <laughs> Anywhere will do. What have we played? 64 minutes. Anywhere will do for Australia. 25 minutes till we've got to go. But the oddness of it, when you look at this, the Australians have got such a spring in their step, haven't they? They're happy to chase everything. Whereas you look at the Danes and they actually look a bit tired and a bit leggy. It's just the psychology at the moment. They know exactly what they need to do, the Australians, and they will give everything in these last, well, this last quarter of the game or so. 
handball given against Jesper Lindstrom and Australia have the free kick on the far side and I think that's such a good point Pat and again we touched on it in the first half at the Euros it was everything for Denmark they yeah. had the belief they had the spirit they still had exactly the same goal scoring problems and they didn't have Christian Eriksen for the vast majority of the tournament but they found a way and I don't think we're seeing the belief in this Danish side at the moment. I'm not I'm not sure it's there. Let's see. We've still got quarter of the game to play. But it's Australia with their tails up. Australia who lead by a goal to nil. And even with Tunisia beating France, that is enough for Australia to go through. If Denmark equalised, it would be Tunisia again in this topsy turvy Group D. As Australia get the decision just inside the Danish half but I think you're right Pat it's tight tiredness yeah they do they, they absolutely do they look leggy um, and uh, against the Australians who at this point haven't dropped in fact if, if anything they've just lifted their pace a little bit as well and just watching the goal scorer Lecky there different player now isn't he I mean he's what he's, I have no idea where he's playing now because he's everywhere he's in the right wing he's in the left wing he's kind of playing almost behind the striker sometimes as, well, I say that, he just started pulling his, his calves as if to say I've run too much and I'm beginning to get a little bit of cramp there. But he has, he's, he's worked very, very hard tonight. Well, he's got his goal. Australia lead by one. As Denmark head the ball away from inside their own penalty area, Mitchell Duke will pick it up for Australia. And at the moment, it's Denmark that can't get the ball here is Behic down the left-hand side. Oh, lovely footwork by Behic into the penalty area. Oh, what a brilliant run. Behic pulls the ball across. It's blocked away by Hoybier. It bounces off Behic and goes behind for a 10-mark goal kick. Brilliant piece of skill, Pat. Well, I've been getting this wrong all along. Behic is actually just a brilliant winger who happens to be stuck at left back. But that's where it isn't where his strengths are. To be fair, when he's been on the ball and when he's going forward, he looks so much more comfortable. He's only five foot seven anyway. So it kind of looks like that skills there were fantastic had he scored that uh, right no exaggeration it was messy like wasn't it it, it was. really it was. was it absolutely was and you can listen to Lionel Messi as Argentina try to qualify on five live and BBC sounds commentary of Poland against Argentina coming up at seven o'clock updates from Saudi Arabia against Mexico as Denmark have the ball on halfway and you're spot on there Pat because he did start out as a winger as he's Behic and he's I come can't. back to left back and left wing back but there you go there's yeah. the latent instincts I should I should have known that but it, it's kind of obvious now that I look at him and the way he plays and the comfort he's got when he's going forward here comes Denmark trailing 1-0 they need two goals or they're going out of the World Cup Scott Volson with the effort deflected and Hoy Bier left it not sure whether he thought he was offside, he may well have been, so he's let it go behind for the Denmark corner, but that was better from Skov Olsen and Denmark. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at them now, I mean, they're going to try and bring, bring another couple of players on, and, and it's one of those ones, you, you've got to throw everything, you've got the kitchen sink, you name it, it has to go at this now. You, your, your minutes are flying away for you at the moment, they need to score soon, the Denmark team. Yep, 68 minutes played, Australia 1, Denmark 0 on 5 Live and BBC Sounds. Corner drifted in from the right-hand side, Anderson was there, did win the header, but it was too much on the delivery, hard one for Anderson, and he heads the ball behind, and it's an Australia goal kick. So now, kitchen sink time, as Pat says, for Denmark, they're making a double change. And Andreas Cornelius and Robert Skov are both coming on. So Joachim Mailer, one of the players being replaced, and Andreas Skov Olsen as well. Let's head for an update from Tunisia against France. Are Tunisia still leading, Conor McNamara? Yes, they are. Tunisia are keeping their side of the deal. They're 1-0 ahead of France, who've brought on Mbappe, but Tunisia still creating chances. France still very sluggish and playing like a team who, who know that this jeopardy doesn't involve them today. They're going through regardless. The win for Tunisia, as it stands, won't be enough. If there was an equaliser in that Denmark game, if Denmark would go on to have the lead, well, then Tunisia would be interested again. But they need something in your game to enliven things here Tunisia 1 France nil. thanks Connor as Denmark give the ball away Australia send it all the way back to Matt Ryan who will play it out for Australia once again Australia lead by a goal to nil as Alexander Barr wins the header for Denmark on the halfway line and that's it Pat isn't it if Denmark score again with Denmark score and make it 1-1 
then Tunisia all of a sudden going through once more and, and Australia as you say will be so desperate to get this second goal but it's so hard isn't it because they know as things stand at 1-0 that they're, they're through yeah you, you you don't really change much you play the way you're playing just now and if you get another break you get another break at the but you're not going to go hell for leather for it, are you, if you're Australia just now? Ball into the penalty oh, area yeah. now. Oh, penalty! penalty. Kasper Dahlberg going down, but the flag is up on this near side. Well, the referee initially had pointed to the spot, then the flag goes up. Kasper Dahlberg, it was for Denmark who went down. So the referee's arm is raised for the offside. Very, very interesting. He does look, Dahlberg, like he is just off. And it, it, it gets a bit of an elbow in the face. I think that's what the referee seemed to see initially. But obviously the defender couldn't see that. I mean, I, I, I think it was Suter, wasn't it? He couldn't see him behind him, but the assistant referee spotted it a mile away. And uh, they're going to complain about it. They're going to say they feel... And he's shouting to them. They're all shouting. Oh, the VR. Well, going v to look at VAR, VAR are checking. I don't and think... Denmark are appealing, but they're saying it was offside. So they're waving it on. Yeah, so, I, I agree. The offside was before yeah, the elbow. Yeah. So, Denmark, for the second time in this tournament, have a VAR review regarding a penalty that doesn't go their way. We saw it in the dying stages against Tunisia for what would have been a very harsh handball, which would have given them the chance to win that. They have not had the chance from the spot to level things up against Australia. But again, fine, fine margins. Pat Nevin as Denmark have a throw on the far side. Australia won. Denmark nil. Australia, as it stands, going through, even with Tunisia leading France via goal to nil. Look a wee bit more comfortable with the system we've got. It's almost a 3-4-3 three, three that uh, the Danes have gone to now. So we've got three attacking players. We've got the wing backs. I think that this is their comfort position. But it's whether they can make use of it and uh, get a couple of chances for the strikers. They need a couple of goals, Denmark, or they're going out of the World Cup. Here is Joachim Andersen out to the right-hand side and Barr in field. Now to Mikkel Damsgaard and back once more. Denmark are forced into their own half. Forward now, they go to Andreas Cornelius and now Eriksson swings the ball out to the left-hand side. The pace is there in the Danish play. Can they find the end product? Andreas Cornelius! Goodness me. The header is wide. The referee spotted something anyway, but that in a nutshell, Pat, is Denmark's striking problem. He missed an absolute sitter from a yard against Tunisia. He's been penalised for a little shove in the back on Kai Rolls. But the header is wide and it can't be. To be honest, I can see the exasperation and I can hear the exasperation in your voice. You're right. That was hopeless. That was really, really poor. Now, he's given a free kick away and it wouldn't have counted anyway. Right, we get that. But you've got to get that on target. You've got, you've got nobody within three yards of you. You're on the six yard line. It's almost gone six yards by. And you're right, it nails it with the problems that they've got. Some more legs coming on for the Australians. Yes, yeah, Sunderland man Bailey Wright is on for Riley McGree, so a defensive change. His World Cup debut, he did go to the World Cup in 2014. Bailey Wright, but didn't feature there. His first appearance at this tournament. Australia clear the ball away, leading by a goal to nil. Kasper Yulman, as the flag goes up for an offside against Australia, Denmark free kick deep in their own half. Going to back five, having the, the, the Australians, and you can understand yeah, why they've done ma that. Matching up with Denmark. But he, he joked before this match, Kasper Yulman, that he might ask Norway to borrow Erling Haaland. And then he, he, you know, obviously it was a joke and backed his strikers, but he must be sitting there thinking, if I just had somebody that could finish off, because yes, creation is an issue for them, but it's been better in this match. They have created enough openings yep. to get on the score sheet. They trail Australia by goal to nil. And I mean, you, your heart just goes out to Andreas Cornelius because that is two absolutely shocking misses at this tournament. Yes, this one would have been offside. Denmark I, 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 I don't think it was offside. I think it was him. He got the yes, free sorry, kick. The yeah, foul, yeah, the free yes. kick. Yeah. But um, it, it just, they don't look as if they have any confidence at all, do they? But a goal could change things. They need to. Australia going through as things stand. Lovely work by Backus down the right-hand side. He's brought down. And that will be the yellow cards as well. As Robert Skov 
exits the scene of the crime, but not quite quickly enough. He's looked very good since he came on, hasn't he, Bacchus? Really good. Comfortable on the ball there. He kept on looking up. He's trying to play somebody through. There was no pictures. There was nobody on. They all looked a little bit tired, not running into areas. So he thought, OK, I'll go for a little dribble up the line. Wins a free kick. Brilliant position. And most importantly, takes a few more minutes off that clock. A clock which is ticking down too fast for Denmark. 15 minutes to play, they need two goals. Moyes ball into the area. Headed away by Denmark, will be picked up by Australia once again and wisely they go back to halfway. Kasper Dolberg is closing down Bailey Wright as the ball is played out to the right-hand side. Backus will bring it down in the corner flag for Australia. Only Mitchell Duke in there. Aaron Moyes swings the ball in. Lecky arriving, won't get there. Irvine heads it forward for Australia, who lead by a goal to nil, who are heading through to the last 16 as things stand. Nothing Tunisia can do. They're leading France by a goal to nil. Denmark need to find two goals or it's Australia going through and Denmark going out. So as Denmark bring the ball down the left-hand side. Here is Robert Scott. Aaron Moy blocks off the route down the left. In field now to Pierre-Emile Huibier for Denmark, who look as though they're running out of ideas. They're running out of time. It's ticking away here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Here is Christian Eriksen, so often the man to spark the Danes into life with his creativity. They need a spark now. Bar nicely laid off by Cornelius. Oh, Dolber tried the little back heel as it fell to him on the penalty spot. That's good improvisation, but it's straight into the arms of Matt Ryan. That's one of those donkey kicks. Not a flying one, but a donkey kick. The ball was behind him. However, he just can't get it on target. In fact, I think he actually hits his own back. But you're right, good imagination there. That, again, it would have been one of the great goals or the great attempts at goal from this uh, World Cup, but not quite there. And it just shows you what the, the Danes are having to do. They're having to go to an extremist to try absolutely anything just now. And at the moment, the Australians, they're looking comfortable. I think this suits them. This by five really suits them because, I mean, as much as anything else, beige is allowed to get a little bit further forward. And when he gets the ball, he looks superb going forward. Well, there are still, though, some tense faces amidst those golden shirts in that section of fans away to our left in the lower tier. They're going through as it stands, Australia. But with Tunisia winning, if Denmark were to equalise, Tunisia would go through and Denmark and Australia would go out. So Australia, can they get this second goal? Here is their goal scorer. Lecky, edge of the penalty area, pulls it back to Jackson Irvine. Lovely little ball out to the left-hand side and Bellic almost off again, tricky his way into the penalty area. He's stopped by Barr and Hoybier will bring it forward for Denmark. Christian Eriksen now out to the right-hand side and Barr once more. Eriksen under pressure, Barr, nice touch. He was absolutely cleaned out there by Mitchell G. The referee's playing advantage and I think Denmark will say thank you very much. We don't have time to waste. We don't want a free kick in our own half as Eriksen spreads it out to the left-hand side. Good defending by Degenek. Out on that left, just to stop the advance of Robert Skov. And the ball is over the top, looking for the run of Bacchus, who's a willing runner down the channel. Andreas Christensen gets there first, plays it all the way back to Kasper Schmeichel. Australia have never kept a clean sheet against European opposition at a World Cup. The clean sheet they kept last match against Tunisia was only their second at a World Cup in their history. But they're trying to preserve it here, because if they do, they'll be through to the last 16. For the first time since 2006, Denmark in possession. Midway through the Australia half, Hoybier plays it out to the left-hand side. But again, are the ideas there for Denmark? That's the question. Can they find that killer ball, that killer move inside the area? Barr swings the ball in. It's a poor delivery. Skov won't keep it in on the far side. And the belief is draining out of the Danes. Well, you called that poor delivery, and that was awfully kind of you. <laughs> You're a kind person, Barr. I mean, you put that ball maybe 30 yards, 40 yards further than it should have been. And I know they're a little bit panicked and they're des there's desperation coming in just now, but when you're, you're up against it, you've got very few opportunities left. You, there's no pressure on them in that ball there. You've got to put it into an angle where the likes of Cornelius can go and attack the ball. And that's a huge sigh of relief from the Australians there. But just look at it now. It's now within touching distance. They now actually believe it. Can they keep on playing as well as they've played so far, the Australians? Because, you know, I'm beginning to say, I think they deserve it. I wouldn't have said that for the first half an hour. They deserve to hold on now. Yeah, Denmark just 
as it was against Tunisia, just as it was in the first half against France, quite simply, haven't done enough. Australia clear the ball away. And Andreas Christensen will pick it up for Denmark. The sluggishness of Christensen getting the ball there, and it's a little jog forward, and it's a pass to the side. You need a couple of goals. You can have the World Cup. And the ball is going straight out of play from Joachim Andersen. And, and Denmark, they're all at sea here. They don't believe, do they? They absolutely don't believe. And it's, it's one of the things, there's 10 minutes to go. There might be 19 minutes to go for all they know. That's plenty of time to go and push it and get yourself further into it. But I, I'm looking around that team and... Do you know what? They don't look like a team at the moment. They really don't. They're, it's a real shock because that's what, as you kept on saying, that's what we did see from the Danes during the Euros, but we're not seeing it here. Australia with the throw, leading by a goal to nil. Denmark with the interception, but they're still deep in their own territory. They will play the ball out of trouble near their own penalty area and now all the way back into their own penalty area. But that's it. The time for patience is gone. Yes, there's not lumping it forward, but they have to go forward with more energy and that's what they're doing now here is Barr down the right hand side into the Australia half pulls it back to Hoybier Ericsson will pick it up on the halfway line now can he pick the pass he'll roll it out to Joachim Anderson and now forward once more to Barr down the right hand side is the delivery better it will fall to Cornelius and then driven in from the edge of the box but blocked away the effort from Jesper Lindstrom and Joachim Anderson will pick it up once more on the edge of the centre circle. Australia 1, Denmark nil. Australia get the foot in. Aaron Moy will clear away. And Jackson Irvine sends it out to the left-hand side. Lecky won't keep it in. Let's head for an update from Tunisia against France. Conor McNamara. Eight minutes of normal time to play. Tunisia are exhausted, but they're holding on to their 1-0 lead. Kazri's goal earlier on in the match. France have brought on the big guns. Dembele, Mbappe, Griezmann. They're playing much better now. But Tunisia need an equaliser from Denmark in your game. It wouldn't be enough for the Danes, but it would send Tunisia through. Tunisia won France nil here. Australia have made a change here. Mitchell Duke is off. Jamie McLaren is on as they look to see this out. It's an attacking change. McLaren will go through the middle as Duke had played. But it's all about the defence now for Australia. Leading by a goal to nil as the clearance ricochets into the Australia penalty area. And that's the first time we've seen Matt Ryan gather that ball and dive on the ground as quickly as he can. Eight minutes plus out of time to play. Australia lead 1-0. As it stands, they are through to the last 16. And it does stand that way. You can feel the tension getting further and further into that Australian crowd there. They're not panicking, they're not shouting, they're not getting behind the team the way you expect them to be because they're fearful. They know it's one mistake. It is one error, it's one misplaced pass, it's one piece of genius from Ericsson. And by the way, he's spending more time at centre-half than he's spending up the field, which would be a big disappointment to the most of the Danish fans there. But this is when it's extraordinarily tense. And Glum faces amidst the red and white flags in the corner on the far side away to our right at Al Janoub because Denmark are heading out Australia leading by a goal to nil they have the throw Behic is taking it now that they've taken so long I think there that the referee is giving the throw the other way I'll tell you who is coming out and cheering every single time Australia do something well is Andrew Redmayne their substitute goalkeeper the hero in the intercontinental playoff when he came off the bench for the penalty shootout and was the hero as Australia made it through against Peru to the World Cup and he's at every single opportunity applauding, cheering, even if it's Australia just winning a throw because they are on the verge of doing something that the Australia side has done since 2006. They are on the verge of reaching the World Cup knockout stages in a group with France who are already through and Denmark who many people thought could really do something at this tournament having reached the Euro semi-finals and Denmark looking to do something here but Dolberg takes a tumble and it's all the way through with Matt Ryan. Well you know they're going to do that now. The Danes have got tall men up front. They do like to go back to front and put it in the mixer as it were. But they've got three centre backs back there. And by the way, Suter's not small, is he? There's six foot six of them. And you're not really going to do them with a big lumpy high ball. Or you might do them, but it's going to be really tough. So they've eaten up two or three of them in a row. And it's it's almost it feels as if that's what the Danes need to do. But there's a wee bit of me that's looking at that, that defensive line from the Australians thinking, yeah, give us that. We'll take that. We can cope with that. 
Here go Australia down the left-hand side. Won't be kept in by Jamie McLaren and Denmark have a throw deep in their own territory. Just watching Kasper Hulemund here, the Danish manager, standing with his hands on his hips. He's turning away. He knows the game is almost up. And Denmark just haven't shown enough. And here come Australia once again with Bacchus outside the area. Goes for the drive. It's blocked away off Christensen. It's out for the Australia throw. And Denmark look to be heading out of the World Cup with a whimper. Do you know what? Bacchus is there. He's, he's about 30 yards out. He's come on. He's put a lot of effort in. But a one and one with a defender in a World Cup in the last couple of minutes. You've got to run him. Because he's got skills to do it, Bacchus. He didn't do it there. He's kind of lucky he's managed to get a little bit of time wasted. He's over by those Australian fans who you no doubt can hear just now. So long throw into the penalty area, headed away by Huybier and Andreas Cornelius will try and get their Bailey Wright does instead for Australia. Harry Sousa comes and helps out, roared by the Australia fans as they send it out to the right-hand side, dinked over the top by Aaron Moy, looking for the run of McLaren, dealt with by Denmark. McLaren had Look to a straight offside anyway, and Denmark will bring it out to the right-hand side. Four minutes plus out of time to play. Denmark need two goals. If they get one, it's Tunisia going through because they lead France by goal to nil. But Australia with a victory. Nothing Tunisia can do. It will be Australia through to the last 16 along with France as Denmark have it on the right-hand side. Here is Barr. Hulman's pointing forward. He's applauding his hands together, but he's not applauding in praise. He wants his Danish players to put in some different movement as Andreas Cornelius heads it back to Christian Eriksen, edge of the D, Moy gets a foot in for Australia, sends it out to the right-hand side, and finally, Eriksen's starting to get forward. Yeah, it's taking a long while, but a no very noticeable. He gets the ball, every time he gets it, he looks up, and then just says, there's nobody running, and he just passes, passes it sideways. I think he gets infuriated by lack of intelligent running in front of him. Nice turn by Andreas Christensen. Plays the ball out to the left-hand side. The big men are in the centre for Denmark. The header is there because the big men are in the centre for Australia as well. Harry Souter. And that's it. If this is Denmark's plan B, plan B, yeah. plan C, plan D, it's the, the one team that they're going to struggle against is Australia as Souter comes out and wins the header there. Not as convincingly. Barr will send it back on. Here is Andreas Cornelius. Sends it back to Barr as we enter the final three minutes plus out of time. Australia won. Denmark nil here on Five Live with BBC Sounds. Cornelius swings the ball into the edge of the area. Headed away by Aaron Moy. Sent back in by Andreas Christensen to Christian Eriksen. Halfway through the Australia half. Back now to Hoybier. The Tottenham man lays it off to Christensen. Out to Eriksen once more just in from halfway as all the gold shirts are back for Australia they're on the verge Lindstrom though lovely run Dolberg into the penalty area touch let him down bar with the drive it's wide okay you've got a lost suitor you got absolutely love and you were telling me uh, before the game about how he's been doing recently and obviously a lot of people have seen him in his time at Stoke he is being a one-man defense at the moment isn't he everything seems he's got a magnet in his head everything's going to his head just now and he's he's going to on that occasion there he's done the sliding tackle in the box he's got to get it right he did get it right and uh the australians it's not a shock that the goal scorer is coming off because he's just run everywhere hasn't he particularly since he scored that goal and he's getting a well-deserved rest huge cheers for matthew lecky who has put australia on the very brink of the knockout stages for only the second time in their history here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. I mean, that would be a historic goal. For, you know, he'll never forget that his, life, his whole life. And he'll never be allowed to forget it his whole life as long as they do not lose a goal in the last few minutes and as long as the Chinesians don't obviously lose a goal. So Aidan Trostic is on, the key playmaker, but he's not been needed and coming back from injury. That'll be a bonus as well. They haven't had to turn to him earlier in this match for Graham Arnold as Behic sends it forward. Australia leading by a goal to nil. Miscue by Ericsson, but will still come forward to Dolberg. And now Damsgaard out to the left-hand side it goes and Robert Skov. Dolberg's approaching the penalty area as is Damsgaard marshalled now by Aaron Moy picking up the danger. The former Huddersfield and Brighton man as Ericsson. Denmark work it to Hoybier, central position, out to the right-hand side, and Barr. 
pulls it back to Joachim Anderson, who lifts the ball in high. Ryan half came, then didn't come, and Damsgaard's penalised. Free kick to Australia into the final minute. Plus, out of time, let's head for an update. Tunisia, France, Conor McNamara. Into the stoppages here, eight minutes to go. Mbappe's had a chance, two nutmegs, but a shot that was saved. Uh, Conor Mouani had a shot, which was deflected out for a corner. France going for it, but Tunisia on the verge of an historic win. It's a turmoil of emotion for them, though, because as it stands, it won't be enough. France could be about to lose for the first time of the tournament. Tunisia won France nil. Thanks, Connor. Here at Al Janoub, we are entering added time. Oh, how long is it going to be? This is the most incredible thing. I'm, I'm giving six or seven, maybe even more than that. Denmark need two goals. Australia just need to hang on. Six minutes of added time. Six minutes for Australia to do what no Australian side has done since 2006 and reach the knockout stages of a World Cup. Six minutes for Denmark to find two what are looking increasingly unlikely goals. And six minutes perhaps for Australia to wrap it up. They're bearing down into the Danish penalty area. Christensen gets across, makes the interception with Backers right on his shoulder and it's cleared away by Denmark up towards halfway. Lindstrom picks it up for the Danes. Sliding challenge will win it back for Australia. Aaron Moy will pick it up for the green and gold as they come forward once more. Denmark clear with Christensen. Nicely controlled by Dolberg on the halfway line. It's now or never. It really is for Denmark. They need two goals. Lindstrom, right-hand side, plays the ball into the area. Who is there but Harry Suter? The header, not enough distance, though. Pulled in. Ericsson can't control on the edge of the six-yard box. And Australia will clear away to safety. Do you know what? They had such a chance that they hadn't realised realized that Rebeic, has, I think he's pulled his hamstring. And he's, he's still on the pitch, but he... he he almost can't run at all, and he's really important at that back post now. Ball into the area for Denmark, cleared away by Australia, comes back to Barr. He'll lift it in once again, the delivery is poor. It's headed away by Australia. Huibier will pick it up on Five Live and BBC Sounds. They're nearly there, Australia. They lead by a goal to nil as they clear away from their own penalty area. He didn't want that, but he hits the ball, he's played back to him. And whether it's a full time sink or just cramp in the back of his leg, but he can hardly run and he needs to get everyone back. But they're all back there. Every single yellow shirt is chasing every single ball. Here come Denmark, committing the red shirts forward. They have to do that. They need two goals. Barr sends it into the area. Suter is there again. Big cheers from the Australia fans inside Al Janoub as they send it up towards halfway. Anderson wins the header, but surely now this is beyond Denmark. But if they score, if they find an equaliser, it won't do for them, but it will do for Tunisia. As things stand with Tunisia beating France, a goal for Denmark knocks out Australia. And the Australia fans know that. As Bacchus sends it forward, nobody there to chase but Schmeichel. And at a time, ticks away. Two minutes played of the minimum six. Australia won, Denmark nil. And it's getting near to Schmeichel time, isn't it? He's going to, if there's any corner kicks or free kicks now, it looks like he'll want to come up the pitch as well. They will try anything, but how much heartbreak would that be for the Australians? They have worked so hard in this second half, but they can't hold the ball now. Denmark in possession, everybody back for Australia as Denmark work it out to the left-hand side. Swung the ball towards the penalty area. It goes behind. It's a Denmark corner and Kasper Schmeichel is coming up. Yeah, that was an absolute stick on. He was going to come up. He's desperate to get up there. And uh, I mean, he's a big tall man. He can go and attack the balls as well. But could they break from this as well? This could end it. And again, the referee is not letting the corner to be taken. He's having a conversation with the players inside the area. <laughs> well, oh, how cruel is... would this be for us? <laughs> Denmark need two goals. One isn't enough, but if they equalise here, Australia are going out. Denmark corner into the area and it's claimed by Matt Ryan. And that is the biggest cheer of the night from the Australia fans inside Al Janoub. Do you know, it, it wasn't a great corner. It's putting into an area where if you put it straight into the goalie's hands, well, everyone has to go and put a lot of that pressure on him. Nobody did. Straight into keeper's hands. And by the way, he still has to catch it under, you know, the pressure of the moment.
he did so and he didn't even think of playing it early to catch Casper Michael out he just thought no I'm going to kill time two and a half minutes of added time to play Denmark come forward again Australia leading 1-0 and going through to the knockout stages unless Denmark equalised Christian Eriksen picks it up left hand side Dolberg's in there Ryan gets a foot in and Moy clears away over the halfway line to safety oh this is horrible to be Australian at the moment you cannot get a hold of the ball they just lump it then wait for the next attack here come Denmark once again inside their own half the game is surely up for them but they can still break Australia hearts ball headed on inside the penalty area Matt Ryan wasn't sure there because Degenek had got a touch on it he didn't want to pick it up Ryan so he's kicked it out for a corner at the very last minute and Casper Michael's coming up again state of shock there because for once Suter didn't win the header so corner to Denmark from the far side Schmeichel is up can they find the leveller the corner drifted in once more Cornelius free header at the back post and it's over the bar once again Denmark strikers let them down a reprieve for Australia and does that miss send Australia into the last 16 well he's at the back post there's not a yellow shirt within three or four yards of them you got to get on target and you know, okay the, the, there's a bit of an angle to it I'll grant them that keep us at the near post but either get it away back towards the back post or get it on target across the face of the goal don't head over the bar and that's three or four teams have had that opportunity and they've just not made the best of it they've got a minute of added time left to play Australia's fans are starting to whirl the yellow shirts around their heads they know that they are so nearly there the game is up for Denmark. They're not going to get two goals in the dying seconds of added time. Australia just need to hold out. If Denmark equalise, Tunisia are through with Tunisia leading France. But Australia have possession inside the Danish half. Here is Bacchus. Moy will pick it up. Scoops it over the top. And there is the full-time whistle. And Australia do what they have not done since the golden generation of 2006. They reach the knockout stages of the World Cup. And Denmark, the European semi-finalist last summer, are out. Let's not forget, that's six points. Six points out of nine for the Australians is magnificent. Now, there are limitations in that team. But I'll tell you what, there's no limitations in the work rate, is there? Every single player, you know, whether they started, came on a sub or on the bench as well, was going through the ringer for every single minute of that game. And yeah, every Australian can be proud of them tonight because they chased, they hide against a team that's got top international players that are playing at the top level for the likes of Spurs, for the likes of Manchester United. They weren't second best, they were for 30 minutes, but they braved it out and they kept on going, they kept on working. And by the end of that game, it would have been an utter travesty had they not got through there. So, well done Australia. And I have to say, Denmark, I don't think there's a lot of sympathy there because they didn't put it in in this tournament. They didn't have the spirit. And at the moment, Australia can just look forward to a wee rest and glory to follow. There is news in the Tunisia-France game. Australia's victory means that they're through regardless, but Conor McNamara? Tunisia might look here like they've been denied the consolation of a famous win over France because Antoine Griezmann is doing his celebration and he has scored his 43rd international goal. It's Tunisia 1, France 1. The goal has come eight minutes into stoppage time. Tunisia knew that it wasn't going to be enough anyway, but this emotion turmoil I mentioned they don't even get to celebrate what the consolation of a win would be over the French Griezmann's equaliser means that France look to remain unbeaten in the tournament 1-1 here for now it's not over yet thanks Connor so Denmark disconsolate the dissection will take place huge disappointment but for Australia, what a moment this is. And Pat Nevin, what a moment this is for the injured Martin Boyle because Graham Arnold, the Australian manager, as he did after they beat Tunisia, has got Martin Boyle. He had to pull out on the eve of the tournament because he hadn't recovered from his knee injury. He's on crutches. He's in the centre of the Australia fans and he's leading that team talk along with Graham Arnold. Yeah, and it's extraordinary. They're, they're loving it. I think they want to stay out there for a long, long time. And it is, you know, it's a painful story for Martin because he's a very, very important player for the national team and for 
his own team back in Scotland. But you know, he has. He's, he's actually shown the spirit here. You can feel the spirit of that group of players there because he's in the middle, he's got his crutches, he's smiling as much as anyone else. And I think the manager's been clever because what he said is, look, do it for him. Do it for your country, do it for yourselves, but do it for him as well. And they've done it. And, wow, I think there might be a few beers tonight in that Australian Cup. <laughs> Australia through to the knockout stages of the World Cup for the second time in their history, for the first time since 2006. It finishes. Australia 1, Denmark 0.